Let's queer up business. Employees of popular gay-friendly LA restaurant have cars damaged in arson attack. Why? <laughs> the general manager of Sorry Not Sorry on West Pico is trying to make sense of a recent arson at the barn restaurant that left three employee vehicles damaged and customers and staff stunned. Someone came out back behind our fence and they poured accelerant down the hoods of three of our employees' cars, slashed through their tires and set them on fire. And the scariest part is that the one car was next to our propane tank cage. So a few more minutes and that actually could have been a very catastrophic fatal event. Last Friday's incident is the latest in a string of vandalisms at the establishment. An arsonist slashed tires and poured fuel over cars parked outside gay-friendly Los Angeles restaurant, Sorry Not Sorry, before setting the vehicles on fire in a property damaging attack the establishment's general manager called deliberate and a hate crime. The restaurant's general manager, Brandon Waller, wondered whether the restaurant being an ally to the LGBTQ plus community has made it a target for anti-gay criminals. It was only by a stroke of good fortune that no one was injured. The firebug struck even as a popular burlesque show was in progress inside the establishment. What's more, one of the cars the arsonist torched was parked in a highly dangerous spot. Bartender Logan Elliott told NBC Los Angeles that when he saw his car in flames, the thought that came to his mind was that he had parked next to a cabinet full of propane tanks. The fires were set just a few feet away from the DJ, the performers, and the guests. Chef Kim Vu said that no one was hurt, but there was extensive property damage. In total, the attacker burned the cars of three restaurant employees. The bar manager at the time doused the flames with a fire extinguisher and called the fire department and police, but the perpetrator had already fled. And this is, it's horrific on its face, but even more horrific because this is like two and two weeks. Yeah. I mean, and the last poor woman was murdered. Right. Right. And this is beyond unacceptable. We need the the federal government the state governments to bring out the big guns the fbi these people need to be investigated and they need to be stopped now not after the next one they need to be stopped now there are cameras everywhere they can find yeah. out who did that and they need 100%. to do that immediately yeah i mean i hope someone was able to capture it on uh some kind of a feed or footage so that the per perpetrator is captured immediately and brought to justice yeah absolutely yeah. and more than just restitution <clears throat> right. You know, there needs to be some time. Yeah. The, well, the craziest thought is the trend that this is becoming. Uh, it, it, people are not afraid to do these things anymore. Yeah. Uh, and that's really scary. And uh, this is a very scary event because it could have been uh, catastrophic, mm -hmm. a fire, right? But um, I'm sure there's other things going around that we're not hearing of. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the last presidency. Donald Trump really gave a wave to a lot of, um, you know, homophobia and transphobia. And it's, we're really, you know. Well, you know, on that, on, you know, on your tail right there, I mean, what you're talking about, it, it's not just like Donald Trump now. No. Now it's a whole new, it's a whole new breed of uh, yeah. DeSantis and all mm -hmm. the other oh, right yeah, wing. Oh, uh, yeah, Just, I mean, they're hate mongers. They're hate mongers. And they're, they're really, there's a full on um, attack on our LGBTQ plus community. And honestly, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm always this guy at the table, you know, uh, I'm not going to sit by, by quietly and, and and let our stuff be burned and let our things get destroyed and our businesses and our people get attacked. Right. I'm telling you right now, and this is like really honestly, this is a message to all the youngins out there, the young LGBTQ plus, your your this is your fight right now. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of people <laughs> who are in this conversation, who have been in this conversation advocating mm -hmm. for LGBT for a long time. Right now, Gen Zs, I need you guys to wake up and get up and get in. Put your put your little sleeves up yeah. and and <laughs> put your 
iPads down and let's go. Let's get into this fight yeah. right now yeah. because honestly, this is your future. A lot of the people sitting at this table right now don't even need to be in this fight anymore. And a matter of fact, we could just go and live nice little, nice little quiet lives for 30, 30 plus years and be done with it. We don't have to be involved in this craziness, but we are. And we are because we're all one community, mm -hmm. one whole community, LGBTQ+, QIA, the whole entire alphabet, whatever you, however way you identify, this is our fight right now. And they're coming for us and they're coming for us in a, in a violent way. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we need to meet violence with violence, but we can't be the victim of anyone. Yeah. That's it. That's we right. have fought too much. We, we, have, right. we have been in the streets. We have marched right. in the uh, streets, okay? Fight back. Yeah, we have protested. Back. It, it is no, no, no. You can't come and push us around anymore. Pull That's all it. Legal. I we mean, can pull, you know, right. do all those things. And bringing up Gen Z is very interesting because the thing is, we were that age. Yes. When yeah. we were fighting on the streets, yeah. right? I mean, I was, I was young. I was yeah. in college. Right. It's not, it's not like that they're too young to join the fight. They need to get up. I think that well, they're too they've complacent. Been, they've been, the they're complacent. And that's part of it is our fault. And part because of it we is, made it safe for them to yeah, be complacent. Yeah, we did. I mean, look, villain well, theater it, it, is a safe space and it, it's work to keep it that way. Because of violence in the news and stuff, we had to check people's bags yeah. and we had to take measures because we're afraid. If we see people acting up in shows and they start displaying, uh, uh, signs of homophobia right. or racism stuff right. and we've had we've had to ask people to leave and stuff but uh, really uh, it's for all those 18 to 25 yeah, year olds who right. take all our comedy classes who are queer mm -hmm. and feel safe there mm -hmm. yeah you know you know you said that we did it to them but i don't think we did i think what we did though is we allowed this kind of idea that people were safe and that mm -hmm. people were free and we weren't mm -hmm. right. florida has never well, been a safe no. place for gay people no and it's never had lgbtq rights and gays have never been full citizens in the state of florida and i think where we made our mistake is people allowed this false narrative that everything was okay right. and everything was done nothing was okay right. and nothing was done I and i think that was the danger because now they're complacent because they didn't know that there was a problem. Mm -hmm. And now we're going, oh, sorry, yeah. wake up because we never actually did this. You never actually had rights. Right. You need to get up and start fighting for them now. <laughs> But I think it's also important that it's not just Gen Z. I've been fighting for 40 years. I've been out right. 40 plus years right. now of my life, two thirds of my life. And I've never once given up the fight. Right. I've never been in your face about it. Right. But I've stood there and I've paid fees and I've yeah. supported financially and I've marched when I needed to and I vote politically right you're right we have made it easy but I think I think we have to remind people that we are only a few steps further than we were 40 years that's ago. right that's we need right. to continue the we need to continue the fight's the, not the over. Fight. exactly the fight was not over it was never but over it's built and I think community. that I think we need to like really look at that yeah. and go wait a minute okay but it's we made entire, a mistake we can't right. do this again mm -hmm. that whole never but forget it's the entire thing. community that's gotten complacent because for the longest time down here in south florida where it's okay to walk anywhere you want holding your partner's hand or giving a yeah. peck on the on the lips to your your boyfriend girlfriend whatever you want to call them you know it's been easier down here and yeah. so we forget that there's places in kansas and missouri and texas florida. well the rest of the state the rest of florida but that's why but we I right, think right. This, that's why we're not as active here in florida right. as queer as in other places places. because we have we have the false sense yeah. of right. acceptance it is a false because sense. we can go to wilton community. matters in miami beach right. and it's i live in brickle i hold my boyfriend's hand it's not a problem i mm -hmm. see gay people everywhere but it's a problem when we cross that line where we right. need to defend ourselves or we get a attacked every year almost after miami beach pride there's violence against gays mm -hmm. that goes reported not and just not, miami you know? beach pride but and so, that's what i mean about yeah. the false narrative so it's, it's like not been okay pilot, to walk you know? around but, holding your partner's hand you could walk around and hold your partner's hand and yeah the police weren't going to attack you like they did <laughs> in new york but Things you were that, always a, a, at sorry. risk of being victimized yeah. Yeah. and it happened all the time the thing is we didn't talk about it right. We didn't go to the city hall and go, hey, two more guys got, I mean, I, I get the reports all the time. I, I, I'm mm. not a, a 
committee down in Miami Beach. Yeah. It happens all the time. Mm. We get kicked out of pools in Miami Beach. Oh, you two are standing too close together. What are you doing in this hotel? Denied entry so, at Wynwood so, Clubs. Exactly. All the Denied entry. Queer, so the queer thing appearing is, we people, need to stop you know. pretending like everything is okay and realize that, yeah, we've, mm. we took two steps ahead. And but we, got, we have a lot we of miles long to go. Yeah. We got miles and we to go. need to start yeah. building on what we, um, what we have accomplished and really mm -hmm. take some giant steps now because this violence, this is out of control. But it takes yeah, the whole community. Yeah. It this takes the whole community. This won't stop on its yeah. own. No. We are Queer News Tonight, the world's first and only live daily LGBTQ plus evening news show brought to you from Happening Out Television Network. We operate in the same model of PBS and NPR, but for the LGBTQ plus community. We educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community with more than 100,000 a week watching us on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the story going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.